<laughs> so, you know, the, talk a little bit about the Ruby 7, but I want to step back through time here. Uh, join me, uh, you know, eight, nine years ago when Freedom Scientific, mostly known for, um, you know, JAWS and Magic and uh, some uh, Braille devices and uh, open book scanning and reading technology, uh, made the leap forward into low vision hardware, uh, into that market to serve, you know, age-related vision loss, congenital uh, vision loss, where, you know, it wasn't, you, you had a remaining <coughs> functional vision that could be uh, uh, usable with some magnification, both on the computer, obviously, as well as for tasks around the home that didn't involve electronic information. Um, so we came out with, in 2005, uh, a couple of devices, a Topaz, desktop video magnifier, and what we called at the time the Opal. Um, and the Topaz continues to this day. It's a great desktop video magnifier. We surrounded it with a lot of other tools. The Opal did not continue. It was a miss in the market, shall we say. But we grouped a couple of years later after the Opal, and we came up with a device called the Ruby. Um, and for many years, being an observer on the sideline in my AT career, I would, I would look at the video magnification technology. It was all desktop based primarily. You know, you didn't have mobile options really that much. Um, so when the class of, of devices like Opal and then Ruby came out, people were like, wow, I can shove my CCTV in my pocket and I can go places and I can use it and I'm not, you know, having to say, you know, ask a place if they have a video magnifier, I can do some spot reading or low volume reading. And we hit it out of the park with Ruby, you know. Um, it was the sweet spot of the technology giving you a great image, um, the way we presented it to the user being easy to use. And the, the third item was, you know, with, with most all of our products, all of our products, the durability aspect of it. It lasted and lasted and lasted. It was a great device. So we've evolved from Ruby, which was a 4.3-inch screen, through to the Ruby XL HD, a five inch screen pocket. Again, these are all pocket size magnifiers, um, battery operated, rechargeable. Um, Ruby XL HD, we introduced the high definition camera. Then we took a step back and we took the Ruby platform, the 4.3 inch platform, and we introduced uh, the Ruby HD. 4.3 inch screen, um, additional controls, the zoom in, zoom out, continuous zoom. Um, but a 4.3 inch platform. And then about a little over a year ago, we introduced the Ruby 7. Um, and so a seven inch screen, color coded controls. So if we walk down uh, the, 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 one, the left hand side of the screen, we have a power on button that is yellow and green. We have video enhancement modes for high contrast settings that are blue and white. On the right hand side of the screen, Top right hand side, we have a uh, freeze uh, image button. Uh, so if there was something that we wanted to sort of uh, store temporarily, uh, freeze the image and then move it closer to our viewing area. If it was a pie, that type of thing, we could, we could uh, stop it. We could press and hold that and actually snap the image and store it if we'd like. Uh, below that, we had a uh, increase magnification button and a decrease magnification button and then a little uh, joystick, if you will, between the two buttons, which I'll get to in a second. Um, but one of the real innovative features of this device is that the camera um, actually will pivot for the user. So it's, we call it pivot cam. And so when it's in stand mode, it's looking down at your um, document below the, the device. And, and the device sits flat right on top of your um, print material. And however, if you want to, you can take that camera and then rotate it toward you, and you have sort of self-view mode. So I can, you know, look at my face and take a selfie if I want to. I can, you know, on some of our other devices, I think it's, you know, people do some shaving, they do some makeup, people will, you know, has that mold changed in size type of thing. I try to look the other way, I try not to use my, uh, my face is the object here. But the other part of this was we could turn that camera uh, in front of us and we could see in the distance to about 15 feet. So I, I talk about McDonald's mode um, so that if I'm going up to place my order, before I get to the, you know, the, the order taker, if you will, 
I can turn my camera and look up at that menu and scan with the Ruby and get a really good image of, you know, fry, small, medium, and large, what, what the choices are, what value meal I get today, if there's, you know, salads, which hopefully are, are on the menu. I can take a look at that as well. So not only do I get to see what's really on my, in the work area, um, right under the unit, I can now use this as a scanning tool for a little bit of distance. Probably at the most, you're talking about 15 feet. 15 feet. So again, it's a battery-operated device. Works uh, three hours on a charge, about an hour and a half to two hours to recharge the unit. Um, we have HDMI out. So I'm going to connect this to my monitor in a second so we can show the image on a larger monitor. And remember, the bigger you can make your field, uh, the less fatigue there is, the more technically, the more magnification options you have. Um, so it becomes, a, it goes from a low volume reading device to more of a high volume reading device as sort of like a mouse cam type of setup where I'm moving the Ruby 7 over top of my print material, but I'm looking at it on the monitor that I've connected it to. Okay. Um, we have a mini USB um, that can do the uh, charging, but we can also offload the images that we store. We can store up to 105 images, but we can offload it onto our computer. Technically, the Ruby will look like a thumb drive to our computer, and we'll just move over the image files for that. So I'm going to move over to the table now and just walk through some of the features. Okay. So can everybody hear me again? Yes. All right. So I have my Ruby on the table. Um, I have a little uh, data sheet here um, from Mike Parker, our channel partner from Visibility, has provided some of his catalogs that are in the back of the room. And we love Mike. Mike dispenses the Ruby. He dispenses Fusion. And he is a great partner that we have in New York and New Jersey. So kudos to Mike. Um, so as soon as I plugged in my monitor to the Ruby, I got an image on my monitor, which is a 24-inch monitor. And I'm going to use the down magnification button. I'll take that down to the lowest setting, which the range on the Ruby on the 7-inch screen is from 2 to 24 times magnification. And so all I need to do is press my increase magnification button, and I can zoom all the way up. So I couldn't tell you what it is on the 24, but if it's 24 at the high end here, it's probably you know 30 plus times magnification on my 24 inch monitor, okay? I can use, on the left hand side, I was talking about the video enhancement modes or contrast options that I have. So you have five built in, but that you, you have 16 in total that you can choose from. So if I want to get into that mode, I can go uh, press the power button, and I want to say my up arrow key, and I can start cycling through the choices that I have. And there's a little checkbox on screen, and so I now set it to yellow and um, yellow and blue background, and that was not one of the selections, so I'm going to select that by pressing the the, um, the down arrow on the video enhancement mode. So it checks that box, and now I've added that and I can continue to go through the choices and I can add you know green on black black on green really anything you want in that 16 you can you can add in okay now let's get out of there for a second now anytime I'm using a mode and I want to switch very quickly between let's say I want, let me get out of color let me go to high contrast so if I'm in a high contrast mode and I want to go back to color and then back to that contrast mode if I press the power button in combination with the down arrow on the video enhancement mode on the left-hand side, it'll quickly toggle me from color to that last set high contrast mode. So I don't have to cycle through the universe to go between the two settings, okay? So I have my magnification adjustments. I have my video enhancement modes. If I want um, some additional screen enhancements, by pressing the power, pressing and holding power and the two magnification buttons simultaneously, I can get a line marker. And still while holding the power button and the down arrow key for magnification, I can adjust where that line marker is positioned on the screen. Okay. Uh, once I'm set that, if I decide that, well, you know, line markers are great, but I like masking. So power, press and hold the two magnification buttons. 
now I have masking, okay? And I can narrow that up so that I'm just seeing a line, or I can widen it out. And let me do one more, and then if I press it again, power, the two magnification buttons, it takes me out of that mode as well, okay? I'm gonna take magnification down to a low level here, and I'm gonna freeze my image for a second, okay? So I've frozen the image on the screen. I'm moving the camera around so the image is, is, is stable. I can use my increased magnification to bring that up on that saved image, okay? And I can use that joystick that I talked about to pan left and right on that frozen image. So if I want to, you know, get a bigger field on, a, on, a, uh, on, on some print material, I can zoom down, freeze the image, and then use the magnification buttons to zoom up on that frozen image, and then what falls off the screen, I can pan up, down, left, and right. Okay? And then when I'm done, just go back to live mode. Okay? Again, pivot cam. Now, again, this might be more useful, pivot cam doing self-viewing. Okay? Here's Bill Kilroy. All gray hairs, eyeglasses. But now I want to, ch I want to take that um, monitor and now place it in front of me. If I have trouble shaving, use my Norelco shaver. Zim, 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 zim. It's like I have a mirror mode set up here. We, we sell a lot of our Onyx systems, our distance, document, and personal viewing systems through the VAs. And one of the things that the veterans want to do is shave. And they can't really do it with the mirror, but they can do it with the Onyx very easily. Um, we've had uh, ladies sit down in self-view mode, put on their makeup, you know, make sure that they look great before they're heading out the door. And this is a device that, you know, again, by plugging in an external monitor, by put, uh, moving the pivot cam into <laughs> self-view mode, I can look at myself and, you know, do my thing. Okay? If I want to scan around the room a little bit, I have that distance mode a little bit. Smile. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> And again, I'm looking at the monitor, but again, I'm searching around the room. Um, I have LED lights that when I'm in my stand mode, if you will, when the machine is angled or popped up to angle at about 45 degrees, those LED lights are pointing down onto the print material to illuminate it, okay? When I rotate it, the camera, the pivot cam out forward, there are two lights on the front part of the unit that will light up to illuminate what's in front of me. Okay. okay, So I can use it that way to get additional illumination. But most of the time, when you're in distance mode, you're relying on the ambient light in the area that you're in. Okay, um, That pretty much covers the Ruby. The beauty of these devices, they're easy to use. They provide great versatility. It's like dragging around seven to ten glass magnifiers in your purse or in your backpack in one device. You get the high contrast that you need and you get perfect illumination and the ability to save images. Yeah. Questions? Yeah. Uh, price? Uh, price we want, we're going to get a microphone. Okay. Uh, let me get the right over here. Yes. Yes. Thanks, Bill. Right. So then, how is it? So the unit itself weighs 18 ounces. And when we do the hands-on, I'm going to leave it up here, and you can feel it, play with it, do all you all you want with it. Price point is 1395, 1395. Okay. Okay. Now. You always hear like, oh God, you know, it's like my father used to say when we bought Christmas trees, he goes, uh, he'd, go, he'd grab his wallet and he'd go, oh, you know, $20 for a Christmas tree, any room for bargaining type of thing. So you get that visceral reaction to a lot of AT prices. But I do want to put it in context because there's some good news here. And with electronics, um, you know, when we're, when, whenever we are able to drive the volume on manufacturing, we can drive the cost down. So the predecessor to this type of device was called a device called the Sapphire that we came out with about eight years ago. And it was a standard definition clamshell kind of design for magnification. Had a pop-up writing stand. That's one thing, Uncle, I'm talking about the Sapphire. 
um, uh, finish my, 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 uh, my thought process on that. When Sapphire came out, it was $1,700, okay? So we were able to drive that cost down out of the Sapphire, but when we came out with the Ruby 7, the market has changed, you know, there's, there are those economies of scale, and there's $400 effectively, three or $400 that, you know, has kind of been taken out of the pricing on this. Um, let's go back again for functional uh, use of this device, that pivot cam. A lot of people will struggle with, um, they can view the menu, um, but when the receipt comes to, um, to pay the bill, I can view the receipt, but it's really difficult to write on that receipt, okay? I can hold up a Ruby um, Classic, and I can you know, hold it steady and write under that, but some of these bigger devices, it's challenging. On the Sapphire, we had a pop-up stand. It wasn't the greatest situation. With the pivot cam, what I can do is I can cite my pen out where I want to be writing. And then I, then I can tilt the pivot cam. Hold on. Let me do this again. Pivot cam to get onto that pen. Now, it may be a couple of inches in front of. Right. There we go. It takes a second to focus up. It may be a couple of inches in front of the device itself, but now I can go ahead and write comfortably. I'm not trying to force my hand under a camera or pop up or, or, or move the camera up or rotate it around, excuse me, the device up or around. I can just find that spot and then write comfortably. And again, these devices, we're not going to fill out an application generally, um, but when the receipt comes, if I need to sign my name, if I need to initial something, I can do that very easily with something like this. We have a question here. Wait. Okay, we, question we have a here. question here. And we'll, we'll come questions. around and get everybody, but we've got uh, the mic. Two, two oh, questions. Two parts. Um, as I prepare my Santa Claus wish list, <laughs> um, are you telling me I could connect this to my 50 screen each TV, possibly? Yes. The, oh, God. <laughs> uh, and I. Well, what's the trade in value? Because I have the sapphire right here with me. I'll trade that one for that. No. <laughs> I would I would encourage you to reach out to Mr. Parker at Visibility and um, engage him in that conversation. We don't have a formal corporate trade in program for any of the early devices. And, and, and I'll be brutally honest with you. A lot of times in the past, when we've done note taker trade ins, the value that we gave you for your device wasn't a ton. And most people would go out there and sell it on their own or donate it, honestly, for the tax uh, write-off. Next question. Yes. Uh, well, you said the audio autofocus. Uh, autofocus there a way, on the camera, yeah, yeah, but is there a way to, uh, you know, like, like to make, make not a manual, manual focus? There isn't? Oh, no. Too bad. Uh, there is no focus lock on it now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Question. Good question. Right here. Right here. Um, yeah, I... I'm concerned, like, if you're traveling, because, you know, they're probably planning to um, and the laptops and stuff from going on airplanes. Can we use this when we're going through to the plane? I mean, I don't see it being an issue, but just the fact that it's electronic. I have um, taken my Ruby with me regularly on flights. You know, I've, my, my Braille devices. Um, lots of AT equipment in my backpack and like anything else if the uh, many times I, I don't take it out as a rule right I only take out my laptop but traveling through security there are times when they'll see something on the scanner they'll ask you to open it up and, and, and um, tell you turn it on and ask what it is and that type of device so you might have to explain it to somebody but by and large um, I've never really had a problem with it at all. Um, usually they're questioning the Braille display more than anything. Mm -hmm. sure. Next question, just a minute, please. <coughs> oh, I have to apologize ahead of time. I don't think you'll like this question so much, but at $1,300, I can buy the best smartphone in the world with a very high resolution camera. And even with my $100 smartphone, I can wirelessly put it on my 55-inch uh, TV, and why, you know, this is a standalone device, 
Whereas my smartphone, I can do all these other things in addition to, you know, magnifying it and using it as a magnifier and being able to read text and all. So how do you compete with that? <laughs> so it's a very fair question. I welcome these questions all the time because it's, it's one that we get quite frequently. Is how do you differentiate yourself from some of the sort of mainstream products that are out there that add accessibility a lot of times as an afterthought, right? So the, you know, whether it's our software or whether it's our hardware, they're designed from the ground up to be accessible tools for somebody with a vision impairment. That's why, you know, one of the reasons why the, the Ruby has done so well is not just because it magnifies, but because the controls are right there in front of you. It's an easy to use device. It's color coded. It's tactile. Um, it is in a way, it's nice that it's just focused on magnifying because if I want to be reading and all of a sudden my phone rings, all of a sudden my magnifier kind of goes away. Um, but I get what you're saying. My biggest thing in terms of looking at tools for your life, for your occupation, for your independence is to come to events like this, learn about a wide variety of tools, try and get your hands on them, and make an informed decision. Um, there are people here from uh, uh, the ATCs, the Lighthouse Guild I saw walk in. Um, they do assessments all the time on a wide variety of tools for CBBH clients. And I'm a big fan of, uh, there used to be a clothing store that would say, uh, an educated uh, consumer is our best customer. I think I used it at our meeting. The, the Cy Sims or something. So it's a fair question, and those guys are our competitors. Um, I wish I had their economies of scale uh, because we live in a small niche world of uh, thousands, not millions of units. If we had those millions of units scale, I think you'd be down to a $50 ruby. Next question. Just so be minute, advocates please. and spread the word to your friends. Thank you, everybody. I'm just going to be a, a dictator for a second because um, it is almost 2.30. And we want to make sure that uh, everybody gets a little chance for hands-on um, and, and then that Lynette is able to start pretty close to 3 o'clock. So I have one other announcement after this, but first I really would like to thank uh, Bill and Doug because it's been fabulous. And the other, the, the other announcement I wanted to make and I promised Vern I would do it, um, <laughs> is that um, in addition to the catalogs and all those other things we have on the table, so you can find out about our classes, um, we have a very cute um, basket in case anybody would like to help us, help support oh. <laughs> these Demo Center events, because we think they're really important, but of course they cost money. And so if any, and um, it makes a difference when people help. So we really appreciate that. If anybody would like to uh, contribute a little bit to this event and the next one and et cetera, et cetera, please feel free. We'll be so grateful. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay, I think we're done with the uh, Q&A so for now. Uh, you guys uh, can actually come up front and check out uh, either Fusion 11 or uh, Ruby 7. You have to raise your hand though and tell us uh, which one you want to see. Oh, okay. sure. Let me close this. I didn't mention it. When I close it and I open it, it's a camera.